Okay, let's talk solar. I love talking solar. Lately, anyway. Never thought it would be anything that I would probably do, but uh, I, I've done it. So, And I've done it myself, and you can too. So I just want to kind of take you through everything that I've set up here and how I wired it and the costs and... Um, you know some of the details of the system that I've set up and this is a basically a one kilowatt system and uh, the reason that I say that is because I have one kilowatt worth of solar panels and um, also a one uh, 1000 watt uh, inverter to match so um, what you're seeing here is uh, my status panel so I can actually access this this is all installed in my RV and I have a router uh, plugged into the charge controller and I can actually access that over my network and I can see all the statistics I can see that the solar panels are currently generating 67 volts and the sun's about to go down so it's not generating much and I can see that uh, today I've generated 0.1 kilowatt hours of energy. I just turned the system on an hour ago, so that doesn't surprise me. Typically I can generate, um, well, I guess all I can use um, in there. So, uh, And then um, right now it's pushing 52 watts into the battery bank. Battery bank's at 12.5 volts, a little low, uh, but it's working on charging it. And the it's pushing in 4.2 amps into the battery right now so pretty neat little I'm not gonna go into too much detail about the status panel there so let's jump over to the wiring so here I've created a wiring diagram of my setup and these are all the exact components that I used so starting with the battery bank down here at the bottom I've got four interstate GC2 XHD UTLs. These are 6 volt 232 amp hour golf cart batteries and I have them wired in series which is what the red that turns to black that's a that's a positive going to a negative and then on th these two I have a positive going to a negative so they're wired in series and what that does is doubles the voltage so it takes the, uh, these two 6 volt batteries and makes them one big 12 volt batteries and the amperage stays the same the amperage of these batteries are 232 amp hours then what I've done is I've taken the positive over here and wired it over to the positive over here on, on these two batteries and then from these two batteries the negative over to the negative on these two batteries that's called wiring in parallel and that doubles the amperage but leaves the volts the same. So I end up with one big battery out of all these four batteries that's a 12 volt 464 amp hour battery. So that's where the power is coming from. And then I have, you see this green line here, I have the battery bank uh, grounded to the chassis of the RV to the subframe. From there we go to if we follow the positive line here, we go to a 150 amp breaker, and that is wired directly to the inverter. And then the inverter uh, negative is also wired back to this negative side of the battery bank. Since this is one big battery bank, anything positive that you're going to wire to it is going to be on this side over here, and anything negative is going to be on this side here you wouldn't wire anything to any of the terminals in between there or you wouldn't get uh, very good results so uh, and then the inverter is also grounded to the chassis so next we we have uh, this 80 amp breaker here and you always want to put a breaker in between your components or a fuse I chose breakers because if they trip you can just flip the switch back and everything's back on. Of course you need to figure out what your problem was and fix that and then and then flip it back on. With a fuse, if it blows, you have to replace the fuse. And 
that can be costly depending on the size of the, of the fuse. So from the 80 amp breaker we come over to the charge controller and the charge controller is also grounded straight to the battery bank on the battery side and then on the solar panel side of the charge controller we have only the positive wire coming up to the positive side of the solar panels which these are wired in series so I have tr I've actually only got two of these up on the RV so um, I've doubled the volts which comes out to around 92 volts is what it generates and then the amperage stays the same these panels I, if I remember right is something like 9 amps or something like that so and then I have a fuse, a 15 amp fuse, uh, to cover that. Uh, so if the if it starts um, pushing more than 15 amps, then I want this to blow because that means there's a problem. All of the wiring has been uh, gauged according to how many amps I think I'm going to be pushing over that particular uh, wire. So. Um, no need to buy thicker wire than, than necessary and if you use thinner wire uh, the chances of, of it getting really hot and possibly starting a fire is pretty good so um, so this is a single lot wire anything on the battery bank they call it single lot 1 slash O that's the size uh, that's the gauge and um, it can handle 200 and or let's see no it can handle 170 amps I believe the, this wire can before it'll start having issues so that's the reason for the 150 amp breaker if there's ever in more than 150 amps flowing through here I want that breaker to pop and stop doing what it's doing and uh, this this uh, midnight classic 200 charge controller here this is capable of, of putting out 79 amps uh, max so I've put an 80 amp breaker on that line so moving back over here to the inverter I have two plugs uh, wired in to the inverter as you can see here I have an AC out that's what I plug my uh, RV into there are more elegant ways of doing this um, if you wanted to wire it straight into the AC panel in your RV you could certainly do that and you could install a transfer switch either a manual one that you could switch to switch between inverter and shore power uh, or an automatic transfer switch which costs a little bit more I chose to go an even cheaper route and I just plug the RV directly into my inverter so uh, this happens um, on the outside of the RV, I run this. This extension is is in a is in one of the cubbies in the RV, and I just open that up and then plug the RV into itself, basically. And then I have um, one 110 power to I have AC power to the entire uh, RV. The AC in can be plugged into this. This inverter has a PFC charger on it, and it's a 50 amp charger, which is really good and uh, that's why I bought this inverter uh, because for the price to buy an inverter and then buy a separate uh, charger uh, just didn't make sense so uh, that's why I went with this one but I can plug in this inverter to uh, either shore power or a generator which I've done both and it works pretty well so far I just have one little hiccup with the generator uh, it seems to um, trip the inverter after about 45 minutes of being on but but then uh, after that it'll run for hours so minor issue uh, hopefully uh, I have a um, magnum energy remote for this inverter on the way that I'll be adding to this graph this this graph this wiring diagram is actually going to get bigger so there may be an update in the future on that so that is how my solar system is wired and I want to go into a little bit about how much all of this cost. I'll show you very quickly here. So um, when I started to kind of price this system, I kind of listed all of the appliances that I thought I would be running in the RV. Uh, and I 
I figured out the watts for each appliance. And the way you do that, you know, typically for a laptop, let's say, if you look at the power cord or the appliance, they always have uh, watts or on them, or it always has voltage and amps. It'll have one of the two on there. If it just has voltage and amps, uh, you can just multiply those together to get the watts. So in this case, uh, this is 120 uh, volt, and it must be a little over a half an amp. So I end up with 65 watts. That's how much this uh, laptop uh, charger will draw out of the AC system. And same for everything else. So I, so I figured out all of the watts there and then totaled those watts. I have 249.5 watts. That's if I was running all of this stuff all at once. I'd be pulling 249 watts. But I'm not running it all at once. Uh, I'm running it, you know, for a certain number of hours every day. So laptop I might run for eight hours a day. I work on my laptop, so that's, uh, that's a conservative number, but uh, and then the modem and the router I might run for 12 hours a day and then shut those down uh, at night when I'm not using them. I might charge my cell phone for an hour a day. I might watch the TV for a couple hours. The LED lights are nothing. They're a watt and a half, so I might run those for six hours in the evening and early morning or something. And the heater is uh, 40 watts. I might run that for 14 hours a day on a really cold day. That may happen. Um, and then, uh, you know, mostly at night. Whoops. Messed up my spreadsheet there. Okay, we fixed it. So, and then uh, the water pump. Um, I might run for an hour a day. And then uh, battery charger. Uh, I probably won't run at all, actually. I do have um, a trickle charger uh, for charging other batteries, but I put that on there anyway, just in case. So, um, so then I calculate my total watts a day. That's uh, the watts times the hours equals the total watts. And then if I uh, divide that by a thousand, I get the kilowatt hours that I'll actually use for each of these appliances. And then I've totaled my power consumption down here so this is power consumption, this is per day, and um, I would be using 1.462 kilowatt hours per day. And that's nothing compared to a regular house. Uh, a regular house is, you know, I think I looked at my power bill last month and I think I used 700 kilowatt hours for the month. So. With this system, I'm using 43 kilowatt hours per month. Uh, but this is just in my RV, and I'm not washing clothes. I'm not running the air conditioning. Um, I'm not running a big furnace. I'm not running a big range. Uh, you know, things like that. So uh, my monthly consumption came out to 43, uh, 44 kilowatt hours. And that's what I designed the system around. These are the numbers that I came up first before I bought anything. Uh, and then I put together some priority consumption numbers, and uh, these are thing, these are like the priority things that I have to run. Uh, and, and those numbers ended up being a little bit less. Not much, so uh, not really a big, big difference there. But Okay, so talking about cost, um, this is based on a 990-watt system, which is basically a kilowatt. And uh, the... This is the cost that I paid for each of these items, and I shopped it. I, I, I sh what I do is I, I'll hop on uh, Google and search for the device that I want, and then I'll click on shopping, so Google Shopping, basically, and then just compare prices uh, and, uh, between all of the, uh, the sellers on there. And I'll buy it not always from the cheapest, uh, because sometimes they're not reputable, but I will um, typically, typically uh, they are reputable if they're on Google Shopping, and uh, I will buy from uh, the, the cheapest uh, seller on there. And then I'll also look at the regular search results too, because a lot of times Amazon has good deals on things and and stuff like that. So, um, 
so this should give you an idea of what I paid uh, for the system. Uh, the total was, and this the, all these costs include shipping. I put the retail costs over here so you can kind of compare what the full price of these items might be. So I ended up uh, saving quite a bit and um, just by shopping around and and when I got the panels those are so large that they have to be shipped freight freight is pretty expensive to ship I think the package was 283 pounds and most of that was probably half of that was the pallet that they sent it on so they wanted three hundred seventy dollars just for shipping uh, on these but I called them and uh, ended up getting free shipping so that was probably my biggest discount was getting free shipping on these panels uh, none of these numbers include shipping so I've added some estimated shipping um, to the retail cost and uh, came up with a total of uh, $3,796 for retail I paid $2,930 for all this equipment and saved about eight hundred and sixty six dollars just by shopping around and then I saved more by installing the system myself and wiring it myself and manufacturing my own mounts for the solar panels on top of the RV and these kind of things so you can save a lot by doing it yourself all the information is available online uh, feel free to ask me any questions of course but uh, that information's all out there so um, that uh, that should give you a pretty good idea of um, the you know how I wired my system and and the cost for this type of a system that you could potentially um, use on a daily basis if uh, if you needed to. So um, this this system will facilitate boondocking for um, long periods of time, as long as I want, really. Um, so one other. A uh, little thing I'll tie on to the end of this. I know this video is getting a little long, but uh, there's also a website that my charge controller reports to, and the website is mymidnight2.com. And the charge controller basically every five minutes uploads statistics to this website. I'm going to go ahead and refresh the page here because I probably have more stats. I do, yeah. So, um, and then and then you can go back through and you can see a history of, you know, you can move this graph, this anywhere on the graph here, and you can see a history of uh, your charge, oh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff you can check in here, your power, uh, uh, your photovoltaic volts, your uh, amps that are going in, your state of charge, net amps, you know, battery temperature, board temperatures, uh, how long it's been in to float, uh, total energy g generated for the day, all kinds of statistics. And you can access this uh, just over the web. So you can access it from a mobile device too. I've done that. So you can actually see uh, where your system's at at any given time and also see a history of it, which also helps with uh, debugging if you run into issues. So that is it. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Like if you like it. God bless. We'll see you next time.